Ladies and gentlemen, if you've been following the channel for any length of time, you'll know that I'm a big advocate of upsampling technology rather than just wasting tons of compute power rendering natively. AMD's FSR, NVIDIA's DLSS, and of course, most recently, Intel's XESS technology. But there's been a lot of controversy as to exactly how FSR works and its relationship to Lanchos. I decided to reach out to AMD and conduct a little bit of research on this, so thanks very much for them for the help making this video. Before we jump in though, a quick word from the video's sponsors. If you're running a copy of Windows 10, which isn't activated, of course, not only do you have to worry about the missing customization options, but there's also that annoying Windows desktop watermark reminding you to activate. Today's video is sponsored by whokeys.com, and they have an excellent price on Windows 10 Professional, as well as home keys. Yeah, and they also, of course, sell games. I've bought a few Windows 10 keys with my own personal account to test everything was legit and worked in preparation for this sponsored video. You can pick up one of their keys for 25% off using the coupon code RGT in the checkout. There's links to their website in the video description. Also, if you're building a few systems, there's bundles available too. Again, you can check out whokeys.com and use the coupon code RGT for 25% off the listed Windows 10 key prices. So yeah, graphics technology and I have long had a love affair. It really started back when I didn't even have a PC. My friend Adam did though, and I would regularly go to his house and we were playing games such as the original Doom, Command and Conquer, Descent and so on. Eventually I did manage to get my own PC, Reed, my parents got me a PC, and out of my hard earned pocket money I managed to purchase a 3DFX Voodoo 2. And this was in a very interesting time in the industry. If you were alive during that time you'll know that technology was just moving at a lightning pace, and there was a lot of competing technology. Not only were there tons of players in the market, such as, of course, 3DFX, NVIDIA, ATI, and so on, but there wasn't even exactly a standard in terms of the APIs that we know now. OpenGL, Direct3D weren't exactly a thing in terms of every game, so it was kind of a crapshoot for developers to which API to uh, support, or even which 3D chipset. So why am I going into history? Well, it kind of is like that now with a lot of competing technologies and honestly, I think it's a very interesting time in the industry. More recently, AMD and Nvidia have embraced technologies such as hardware-based ray tracing and upsampling. Like graphics hardware, both ray tracing and upsampling have been a big focus of myself and the channel. Upsampling in particular I feel is extremely important because it will provide extra grunt to lower end cards and push crazy frame rates to ultra powerful GPUs such as the RX 6800 XT or Nvidia's RTX 3080. And this is not even to account for other players in the industry like Microsoft and DirectML. So I think that things are going to become extremely interesting as the quality becomes better and better and better for upsampling technology, probably almost imperceptible to native 4K or whatever the target output resolution is. And just as important, it will help consoles, whose fixed hardware specs create interesting dilemmas for developers, as gamers forever demand better graphics and more immersive gameplay. On PC though, it is hard to ignore the cost of visual effects such as ray tracing, they cause a significant impact to frame rates, but yes, the games do look gorgeous with ray tracing enabled. To this extent, Nvidia pushed DLSS, Deep Learning Super Sampling, since their launch of the RTX 20 series, Turing, back in late 2018. Just like any new technology, support was thin on the ground initially, but since has gathered quite significantly, a large number of game developers have come on board. Visual fidelity of DLSS has also improved considerably thanks to numerous revisions of the tech. With DLSS 2.2, it's also easily implemented into game engines as plugins. So when AMD were rumored to be working on their own upsampling technology, there was of course naturally a lot of interest of how it would work. AMD's RDNA 2 architecture essentially is found in both consoles and in PC as well. It well, supports sampler feedback, variable rate shading, and hardware-based ray tracing, essentially feature matching the RTX 30 series. So what AMD were doing for its upsampling was an intriguing prospect. 
now revealed and released. It's obvious that FSR, Fidelity FX Super Resolution, it's quite a different beast to DLSS. And AMD doesn't believe it's precisely competing with NVIDIA. And to my understanding, honestly, NVIDIA feels the same about AMD's FSR. I asked AMD to provide a direct quote as what their goals were for FSR, and I was told the following. Our goal with FSR was to provide a compelling upscaling solution based on industry standards that is open source and does not require any specialized proprietary hardware, so it can be supported across a wide range of platforms for all gamers to benefit. More than 40 developers have integrated or plan to integrate FSR into their top titles and game engines, and FSR is supported in more than 100 Ryzen processors and AMD Radeon graphics, in addition to NVIDIA GPUs." End quote. I'll release another video soon, really explaining the technical differences between FSR, DLSS, and also Intel's XESS, as yes, Intel are also working their own upsampling solution, with the high-performance graphics cards even supporting features like ray tracing. That video will feature more graphics comparisons and explanations on how the technologies differ, but with this video, well, the gist of FSR, if you've missed it, is that it's upsampling technology developed by AMD with several major positives. Number one, it's cross-platform. It'll work on phones, PC, and consoles. With the PS5, PS4, Xbox One X, Xbox Series X, as well as S, amongst those supported. Indeed, Xbox has incorporated FSR into its development environment as well, helping standardize this further still. On PC, it will run across numerous graphics architectures, from NVIDIA's Maxwell architectures, the GeForce GTX 900 series and onwards, and AMD's own RX 400 series, Polaris. Amongst, of course, other iGPUs from Intel, and we can presume too that FSR will indeed work on Intel's XE architecture. But it's thirdly very easy to implement in both game engines and games because it's all open source, so you can go in, tweak it, modify it, and adjust it as needed. Finally, for users, they're able to adjust the in game quality but at the sake of frame rate. This basically adjusts the internal resolution targets. More on this in a moment. But yes, onto the controversy then. Recently, a number of articles and discussions were created over the upsampling methods AMD employed with FSR. Essentially, this confusion is something that I hope we can set right in this video. Let's explain a little further. When digging through the GitHub entries of the code, I'll link, of course, the FSR repository in the video description, there are references for Lenchos under the EASU portion of the code. We'll get into what that is in just a moment. The scaler uses modified fast approximation to the standard Lenchos size equal to kernel. Lenchos is a tried and true method of upsampling, and it generally does a pretty good job. But the story is that AMD's FSR technology is just this. It, well, isn't quite true. It's missing a large piece of the puzzle. We'll discuss how FSR passes work soon, trademark, but let's get back to an odd comparison point, the NVIDIA control panel. It turns out that NVIDIA's DLSS tech is not the only upsampling method that you can use with a GeForce card. And technically, you can actually go into NVIDIA's control panel and enable Sharpen. Yeah, fairly odd name, right? But here, NVIDIA provides a fairly rudimentary set of controls that you can play around with. Ignore film grain, the sharpening amount, and GPU scaling. By the way, you'll definitely want to turn the latter on if you want this to work. This rather strangely named option, which frankly you could easily ignore or misunderstand, is actually a form of Lencho's upsampling. This allows you to run games at different resolutions, say 1080p, and then upsample to 1440p, let's presume that that's the native resolution of your monitor, fairly easily. Indeed, if you want to get fancy, super fancy, you could even start to create custom resolutions. So you could have a resolution of say 1800p and then select that resolution and have your GPU upsample. This method is actually discussed recently in even NVIDIA's own GDC discussions. 
something I watched and found rather interesting at the time. They were comparing the differences between this method using the game control, of course, to their own DLSS solution. This is a very cool feature of NVIDIA cards. It's, well, pretty cool that we can easily employ this into different games, but the visual quality on offer will be behind the company's DLSS technology. Oh, and AMD's FSR. Oh yeah, let's get back to that, shall we? I want to be clear then that FSR is not using the exact same methodology used in NVIDIA's control panel, a simple Lencho's upsampling method. It is indeed considerably more advanced. The explanation here is that AMD have essentially taken an established piece of technology and then enhanced it using multiple customizations. This, by the way, was initially discussed in AMD's own words in a tweet, but since then I actually reached out to AMD and they provided me a couple of technical details. So yeah, this is passed by them and well, yeah, they've basically told me that it's A-OK. -okay. So thanks very much to AMD for the help here. So pass one is EASU, Edge Adaptive Spatial Upscaling. This is where an input frame of the game is essentially analyzed and the bulk of the reconstruction is achieved. The pixels are compared to their neighboring pixels so that FSR can understand how it must upsample them. EASU uses Lanchos as one of the building blocks, but AMD have made major modifications to Lanchos to adapt it to the needs of FSR. The other key of FSR is the second pass, which is RCAS, Robust Contrast Adaptive Sharpening. This basically enhances the pixel detail in the upsampled image from the first pass, EASU, and then will try to sharpen it. Lanchos is not applied in the second pass. Additionally, I was told this about uh, the differences between Lanchos and FSR. Normal Lanchos upscaling typically interpolates input color values straight from the source image. However, in FSR, color interpolation is directional and depends on the features of the input kernel. We, AMD, also replace the sync function with our own polynomial. We also replace the sign function with our own polynomial approximation in order to address the ringing artifacts and to improve performance. EASU uses Lancos as one of its building blocks, but AMD have made major modifications to Lancos to adapt it to the needs of FSR. Again, end quote. The timing of when FSR is run in the rendering pipeline is also extremely important. FSR is ran late in the pipeline. This means after geometry and other basic rasterization is performed, including stuff like ray tracing. FSR then occurs after all of this, but prior to certain post-processing effects, such as, say, lens blur, noise, or uh, chromatic aberration. The game's UI, though, is rendered at whatever the native resolution you've set the game at. So if you've set the native resolution to be 1440p or 4K, then that's the resolution the UI will render in. So then, FSR has several different quality settings. There's a nice table AMD have provided as to what input resolution is used as the base for the output native resolution. The higher the image quality selected, you guessed it, the more pixels FSR has to work with and the higher the quality. If we take a look at 1440p as our native resolution, for example, Ultra quality for FSR would mean that the game, for all intents and purposes, is rendered at 1970 by 1108. This is 77% of the screen resolution of 1440p. So stuff such as geometry, ray tracing, and other taxing steps are all rendered and processed at 1108p, and then FSR cranks this up to the 1440p output of our screen. The UI and some post-processing effects, like for example, film grain, will then be added at this high resolution since they're not exactly difficult to run. So again, we'll be delving more into DLSS comparisons and inner workings in a follow-up video, but AMD's strategy here has been a more generalized, simpler to implement tech. FSR, for example, does not take into account motion vectors. This can reduce the quality of objects in motion. In brief, well, motion vectors track how pixels move from one frame to another to better understand how to change things from one frame the GPU is working on to the next. But 
not having this does simplify integration into certain engines, lowering the requirement. FSR has been a very successful project by AMD, not just in terms of positive PR, but also as a feature. And we're now seeing it modded into games such as GTA 5 and even supported by PlayStation 3 emulators. This is very cool stuff. So, because FSR runs as a compute shader which can run on hardware such as NVIDIA's Maxwell or AMD's own Polaris architectures, this leads to interesting questions. I'll ask you just to take a moment, sit right there, and I'll explain the solution to this precision problem I'm about to lay bare. Keeping our thoughts to AMD's hardware for a moment, Vega and later, so for example RX Vega 64, the RX 5700 XT, the RX 6800 XT here, all support half precision floating point operations, known to its friends and buddies as FP16. Polaris RX 400 and 500 series does not support this. This means that architectures such as Polaris will need to run these operations at full precision. This is done via a bit of code known as a fallback. This is a fancy way to say that FSR has a code path, which runs if you're running, say, an RX 480 or an NVIDIA GTX 1080. This is slower to execute than half precision because, in theory, you can double the number of instructions at time if you're running at half precision, but in reality, the performance impact isn't too big of a deal, and certainly still a huge positive for FPS in games running FSR with, say, an RX 480. So again, I think that this video has turned into a slightly longer project, perhaps, than what I'd originally anticipated for it to be. And I would also, once again, like to extend my uh, thanks to AMD for their assistance in looking over the script and also providing me some quotes for this video. In the not too distant future, I will be delving a lot further into Intel's XESS, as frankly, I find it extremely interesting, and also doing some comparisons and discussions of other upsampling tech, such as DLSS and, of course, uh, FSR, and how this all is going to affect things in the future, and what exactly the differences are, and also some image quality comparisons as well. But I think this video has served its purpose, hopefully, anyway, and it's hopefully provided you guys some understanding exactly what the differences are between Lanchos and DLSS and FSR, at least from a fundamental perspective. If you've enjoyed the video, uh, well, it's YouTube, so you know what to do. Leave a like on the video, of course, and subscribe to the channel if you're not already, and uh, I will see you soon. Take care. Have an amazing day. Bye for now.